viewers, uh, I want to welcome you again to our show, Diaspora Live Show. Uh, on this show, we talk about issues that affect the diaspora. And uh, this, uh, the past uh, few months, we've been talking about uh, uh, politics in America. Uh, right now, uh, we've completed the, all the nominations for, for the GOP and also the Democrats. And uh, apart from just getting a sense of how that went from my panel, uh, what we are also going, we are introducing a very uh, sensitive topic uh, uh, today in the sense that, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, on this show, we welcome uh, a different and varying uh, voices and opinions and uh, viewpoints. And um, uh, 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 this past week, I've been discussing uh, the Black Lives Matter in view of the recent uh, uh, riots in the streets uh, uh, and with the, uh, uh, Dr. Nathan Wangusi. And Wangusi has a, a very, very refreshing perspective on what's going on. Uh, 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 most of us are rooting for the Democrats to win in the election, especially uh, uh, Joe Biden. Uh, uh, but Wangusi has a, a different uh, take on this. And this take is rooted in his understanding of uh, uh, revolutions and revolutionary ideas and uh, civic engagement. And since right now we are talking about uh, Black Lives Matter and uh, the killing of uh, young uh, 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 African Americans and generally Blacks, because uh, if, if you're Kenyan and you live here and uh, they stop you, they won't distinguish between uh, black Americans and African Americans as long as you look like me or like uh, uh, Professor Monda, they will they'll treat you the same. So today we want to uh, hear from uh, Wangusi about his ideas on why he believes that uh, even uh, right now uh, uh, it would be very wrong for the Democrat to win the election. I'm not sure that uh, 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 Wangusi is going to vote for Trump. Uh, I hope not, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll, hear from, <laughs> we'll hear from him. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, Wangusi, uh, let's get into this straight away. Uh, please talk to us about your ideas. Why do you think it's, uh, it should be a wasted opportunity, especially for reforms, if uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris or generally the Democrats are elected to office. All right, great. Uh, Chris, thanks for having me on the show. Um, and uh, I, I want to start with a disclaimer that I have been, since I landed in this country, a Democrat and a very strong supporter. In fact, in 2008 and 2013, I, I actively participated in the electoral process as a, a field organizer on the Obama campaign. Um, what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks is listening. And I think it's important in, as a civic um, duty to actually listen into the, the political positions that your candidates or your political parties are presenting. So we first had the Democratic um, Convention and they set their party positions and then we've just now had the Republican position. Uh, uh, convention and they've set their, their party positions. And what I was hoping to hear is a more progressive position with respect to all the challenges that this country is having today, at least the most relevant ones. And in my mind, and from the discussions we've had, those are two. So the first is the pandemic, which has been um, mismanaged significantly by the current administration. And the second is racial equity, which is in my view, justice that has been delayed for far too long. No, no the, 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 the general mantra around um, um, uh, racial justice in this country goes something along the lines that America is a work in progress. But I would argue that racial injustice at the level in, of which it has gone on in this country has gone on for too long and it is completely unacceptable and something needed have to, to have been done. Something, something had to give and that's why Black Lives Matter um, happened. But as I said, I was waiting to hear a progressive position with respect to Black Lives Matter and I'll explain what that means. So 
the the Democratic Party, just like the the Republican Party, needs to get an electoral majority to get into 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 the White House and to to take control of both the upper and the lower house here in the United States. But for them to do that, they have to sway a a a um the uh, Middle America, this so-called silent silent majority voters who will swing either way. Uh, in 2018, 2013, they swung towards the Democrats and then subsequently they have swung towards the Republicans. And what has unfortunately happened is that the more liberal and moderate arm of the, of the, of the Democratic Party has dominated um, that position. And they've not taken strong positions with respect to police reforms and they've not st- taken strong positions with respect to racial justice. It is not that, if you listen very carefully, it's not that they don't support, they do, but they're not taking strong positions. In addition to the fact that over the last um, 20 to 30 years, particularly starting in 1994, it was Democrats, not Republicans, who are responsible for creating this, um, what, they, what they now call the school to pipeline, uh, the school to prison pipeline, when they passed the crime bill in 1994. In fact, uh, Joe Biden, who is the current um, uh, party nominee for the Democratic Party, was behind this bill. He was one of the main authors of this bill. The, 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 the persons whom they've touted as the main voices in, in uh, Hillary and, and uh, Bill Clinton were who started this, um, um, can, can I jump who started this program. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. I'm listening. To, you know, you're, you're raising great points. So one of the things that you talked about was the need for an electoral majority in yeah. order to either get the, the upper and lower houses and the executive branch. So that is the goal. If you just look at the hard numbers, yeah. the white America constitutes, what, 60, 70% of the population. Yeah. Okay? So effectively, they are the majority. In 1994, when uh, the crime bill, when America was undergoing this whole tough on crime, war, war, war on drugs uh, mm-hmm. uh, discussion, the whole idea, the whole reason behind it was to appeal to the middle. To white the, voters. Uh, to white voters. To white voters. Yeah. Yeah. So being so, moderate on those issues is so, an appeal to white voters. That was in 1994. So you can yeah. understand that in order to get the white votes and, uh, you know, uh, the coalition that got Clinton into power, into office, yeah. he had to moderate some of, his, some of his positions. I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying that the real, the real politic uh, necessitated that basically uh, uh, Bill Clinton play ball. Bill Clinton and the Democrats play ball. The demographic... But at what change. cost? But at what cost? At, the at question cost? is at what cost? It. At the cost that is, of Black American is, lives. That is the nature of politics. That is real politics. And now, I mean, that's just the crassness of it, but that's the yeah. reality. Now, the demographic, the branding of America is real. If you look at the, uh, my community, is a, a majority minority community. Sure. California is very soon going to be a, a minority majority uh, state. Texas, G- Georgia, all these states are definitely uh, so, uh, undergoing a demographic shift. That and I agree, and, and I agree with you. And in, in fact, that's the second point I was going to make. That there is definitely a demographic ch- uh, shift. So you would have expected that the Democratic Party would embrace. And, and by the way, there's a there's a, a, a progressive wing of the of the Democratic Party. We uh, saw this during the the conventions correct. that they still went with Bernie Sanders as their nominee. Yes. So they, there's a percentage of the Democratic Party who are standing on the right side of of this issue. Correct. Um, in people like AOC. Uh, yep, uh, they, they are they're the standing squad, on the squad, the, but the main the main candidates, uh, Biden and and uh, Harris, are not. Where so is they? They where only is the they, they only come. Where is the American? The, uh, where is the American presidency won? So, yeah, Chris, so Chris, I, I, Chris I, uh, could, could I could I jump in for a second? Yeah, uh, please. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah. Chris, yeah, so go ahead. Yeah. I, I think so. So we have two very interesting perspectives here, right? So. Um, This country is very divided. I think if we look at the election of 2016, almost half of the country, half of the states voted for Hillary Clinton and half of the states voted for Donald Trump. Donald Trump won because of 
Article 2, which bases the electoral system on the Electoral College. Oh, correct. Hillary won the majority of the votes, yeah. but Trump won the majority of the states. Now, here's a very interesting and very complicated dynamic that I don't think a lot of analysts of this situation are really viewing. Number one, we're going to be voting by mail, which is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Number two is the fact that a lot of these swing states, it's very interesting to see who will actually show up to vote. There's a big difference between being a registered voter and being a likely voter. You'd rather be more likely to vote than be registered because if you don't show up to vote on voting day, it's really very much like your vote doesn't count. Now, the critical question here, Chris, will be, what wing, whether Democrat or Republican, will be able to get their followers out to vote? As much as Nathan says, I think the status quo should continue so that minority communities can organize under the current situation of repression, of repression of voting, of repression of voting rights. But then there's the other side of which Osiro is saying, which is we need to liberate ourselves from the tyranny of what has become the Trump administration. So, so, the so clear I, flouting so I I, of, of the constitution and the clear flouting mm -hmm. of the laws. So I really think on election day, ultimately, the camp that's going to win are the people that can get those individuals out in the key states I mean, and yeah, across yeah, the board yeah, yeah. to I, vote, I, I, because uh, it's really I, I, about who wins the states. Okay, I, I want to bring in uh, uh, Dr. Makobe. Dr. Obusi, I, on, I get on, the point. Hang on, hang on, hang on, Makobe. You know, yes. eh? Uh, mm -hmm. One of uh, 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 you guys, as you know, I work in Philly, eh? and uh, uh, Philly. Uh, uh, most of my colleagues are predominantly African American. Yes. Uh, one of the re the reasons why I, 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 I took note of what Wangusi is saying was because uh, these are some of the things that I'm hearing. This sentiment and, is not unique. Yeah, unfortunately, eh, it's the same same sentiment I had in the last election. That's why right now, as we speak, uh, 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 Amakobe was sharing some, some statistics about uh, uh, the turnout in the last election, uh, especially uh, the group that never turned up to vote. Uh, exactly. Uh, uh, yep. uh, uh, this, this, uh, Trump's win is attributed to the fact that some African-Americans especially didn't turn yep. out to vote yep. in the last election. Yeah. Yep. So we can't, yes, sure. yeah, we can't So the question vote. is why? Yeah. Yeah, we can't gloss because over what the young, young people are, 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 are talking about. Eh? But uh, let's bring in uh, Dr. Makobe. Uh, uh, she has plenty to talk about this. Uh, uh, Makobe, my question to you is, is uh, are, are this uh, uh, what you'll call extreme uh, left <laughs> views perfect? I, I, thank you very much, uh, Chris, for having me today. And I, I, I really appreciate uh, Dr. Angusi's point of view. I, although I, 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 I actually sympathize with what Professor Ciro is talking about, I think that what, what I understand Dr. Angusi and the people who think like him are saying is that at the, in the current situation, okay, that this country is broken. And when it's broken, it's easier to rip off the band-aid when, when Trump is there than when we bring in a democratic administration, which gives us uh, some sedation. Uh, you, you understand? It is like we are being sedated. We are under under President Trump, we are dying raw. They are giving us uh, to us raw, but under an, a, a, a democratic administration, they give us sedation, and but we die anyway. So what okay. what I understand the young people to be saying is that they do not want to be told obey the law when the other people are not obeying the law. 
they do not want to be put in a, a, a to be bound when the other people are not being bound because when the, uh, the, uh, the administration changes, it's their administration and they have to follow the rules. But I would like to put one thing, one thing out there. The fact that there are no Democrats and Republicans and us we are standing on the side. A party belongs to the driver. In, 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 in 30 years ago, the, we, right now, like you have said, we have two vehicles. One GOP, one Democratic. And it belongs to the driver. The vehicle that you can be able to get to drive is what you can go in and drive. You cannot stand aside and say, let this guy drive until the, the, the vehicle will be fixed properly, and then we go. So since the party doesn't belong to anybody, uh, uh, nobody told uh, Biden to start, to start up to be a candidate. He decided. Nobody told uh, Harris to stand up. He decided. Meaning, in this particular situation system of government, you offer yourself. And so you there are no uh, active bystanders in this thing. So basically, we cannot say we cannot say that Democrats did this 30 years ago because those Democrats it, it, it's a vehicle. I would dis disagree with uh, Dr. Amakobi when he says that uh, we work with who is there, or we cannot blame them. It is the same person, Biden, who authored the crime bill. Yes, this is not a different I, person. I, I it is the same you, person, Clinton. I so you. categorically, categorically, the, the 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 people who support Black Lives Matter are prepared to go the whole nine years. Because this is an issue that has been oppressing black people, not for 50 years, not for 100 years, for 400 years. So but time is uh, up. Again, Time is yeah. up on discussion. So whatever it takes to get this issue through needs to be done. But that is and it will not make a difference whether it's, uh, if, if anything, if it, is, if it is going to be Democrats, they're going to water down the issue again. They've so promised that, us to do that. That's not necessarily true. So we can, and that's why I pointed... No, we can only go by history. We can only go no, by history. No, and as I said, we were listening for the party put. The history was predicated on the reality of the situation, the demographics of the time. I, I gave you the example of 19... So young people are tired. The fact is young people are tired. Well, the, but the young people weren't around in 1994. The people, some of the people who are driving the current change are in, mm -hmm. their, uh, in their late teen, teens and early 20s. So uh, the, the demographic has changed so much and the dynamics have changed so much that you saw when uh, George Floyd was killed, you saw a, a national and international outcry. This is this could not. Have so happened. why haven't so why haven't Democrats gone on the right side of this issue? If Again, if that was the maybe, level of outcry, why haven't well, they gone on the right side of this issue? I, I, just I, to where, placate, just to placate. Let, no, let me ask, then I ask you the question: Where is the where are the elections of this country won? They are won, I'll answer that question. It's a rhetorical question. They are won in the middle. You mm -hmm. have to straddle the middle ground, and when you do that you have to make compromises. And some of those compromises might be antithetical to some of the core principles of uh, you know, Black Lives Matter. But what I, I'm here to, I am here to tell you- In other you, words, let me in other this, words- Let that, me finish the thought, yeah. let me finish the thought. Beginning 2018, mm -hmm. when uh, the squad, when about uh, uh, so many women uh, won the, as a, won, uh, as the lower house uh, uh, on the democratic ticket, that completely changed the discussion. Now we are having a critical mass of, of uh, support where we can actually, uh, uh, the Democrats can actually push their much more moderate uh, wing, their much more centrist wing to start adopting much more uh, stronger positions on matters of social justice, uh, racial justice, and economic justice. And, but the first, first things first, like the good doctor said, we have to win the, uh, the White House. Because if you don't win yeah. the White House, with somebody who calls the very movement that you are supporting. To understand, and also for Americans to understand, the country is very much split. And I think part of the challenge, I think to what Nathan is speaking to, is this discomfort within the liberal wing and the conservative wing, within the liberal wing with things going on as per normal that the Democrats have taken black lives, black votes for granted 
for, for so far many years too long. and nothing has been delivered. And secondly, on the more conservative side, that not all, not all black people are Democrats. A lot of blacks are Republicans, are more conservative. A lot of conservative blacks are very uncomfortable with this normalization of gay lifestyle, gay rights, of abortion, <laughs> and of this idea of uh, sing, sing, um, sing, the, the idealization of the glorification of single motherhood. The, 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 that is the, 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 the elimination of the father within the family network. That so is the, so the, this is part of the, the issue. As much as it's political, in this country, we have a lot of cultural wars. Exactly. In other words, yeah, the, 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 the wings of the Democratic and Republican uh, Party, me, me, of people me. who don't agree with this issue of normalizing abortion for sale, with normalizing single motherhood, but, 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 with we normalizing have that. gay and uh, lesbian Tamunda, rights. We have had that. The point is, in, in as much as you do, somebody may not like LGBT, in as much as somebody may not like abortion, we there are people who so who don't like black too. There are people who don't. The reason why the Democratic Party is a, a party of desperate constituencies is that it accepts people who cannot be accepted elsewhere. So the, the first the first thing. The the, the 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 convention, the Republican convention, have just had a speaker who said, as far as she is concerned, women should delegate, leave the voting to their husbands. <laughs> okay. So the, the, if you start if you start digging and saying we don't want, you know, there are people who don't like LGBT, there are people who don't like abortion, there are people there are people who don't like women voting. There are people who don't like black people being free. So how far are you willing exactly. to go? Yeah. How well, far I, 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 are I you would willing I would to go? I, I would, uh, 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 Amakobe, I would counter that by saying there's a lot of people that respect the roles of gender. This is very important. There's a role in every society, whether you're in Kenya or America or India or China. Societies have certain roles for male and female. And I think part of this, a lot of the Trump supporters, which is the middle part of America, are very tired of the liberal wings of this country, California, the West Coast, and New York, New but Jersey, the East Coast. Wait one second. Okay. Because we tend to assume the middle of the country, Chris, that the middle of the country, their family values don't matter. That and everything you hear on CNN, their family uh, values is, matter. Their I'm family listening. values matter. I'm and listening. I think, I think in I, every society, gender roles matter. But you know what? Time out. I'm listening the, to uncomfort you. the uncomfortable truth that I, I need to put, mm -hmm. put forward is that yes. the Republican Party, as much as they, they, they hold some very um, radical and difficult views to embrace, at least you yes. know that when you're dealing with a Republican who is a racist, you know he's a racist, right? He's not in the closet um, preaching water on one side and drinking, uh, uh, drinking wine on the okay, other side. Let me, let me finish, let me okay. finish that thought. Let me finish the thought. Yeah. So uh, uh, when this translates to, to political positioning, with respect to the Republican Party, we know where their position is and we can challenge that position to change it. With the Democratic Party, uh, let me finish. Let me finish the. the let me finish the thought. Yes, please. However, with the with the Democratic Party, and you know, it's really important to look at not only the electoral history, and as I said when I started this, uh, when we started this discussion, I listened to what they said in the convention, and they brought to the center a moderate position that says something along the lines of, "Black lives matter." However, we are not going to go out on a limb. To, to support it because it's a minority constituent that will not swing the election in our favor. So what, when, when a Black Lives activists and young people listen to that position, all they hear is that it's four more years. If you win, it's going to be four more years of lukewarm policies that do not change or support the lives of Black, uh, black constituents. Because re regardless of whether you go to 
uh, Republican or, de uh, 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 or Democratic uh, states, regardless of whether we've had Republican or Democrat Democratic uh, leadership. Bl black, young black men have been um, mistreated, shot, maimed, and imprisoned by the police. And as I said, this, this particular um, acceleration or this particular um, uh, 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 trend started with the, with the implementation of the crime bill which militarized the police, uh, created, uh, 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 created private uh, prisons, incentivized states to, 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 to create these pipelines for young people. So black people know this. And, and something really interesting that someone said um, with respect to elections, electors are very practical. They are very pragmatic in what they, what they, what they choose when they go to the polls. They look at the issues that affect them. And I can tell you, with no uncertain terms, today, on Black Lives Matter, the thousands of people who are out on the streets, they know that Trump is bad for this country. But they also know that the Democrats will not help them out of this mess. Okay, so, that is important. Dr. Makobe. Yes. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I'm running out of my time. But uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 play the middle ground. Uh, these are real issues. These are really yeah. concerns. Yes, this is a really concern. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that actually, I, I was of the view, of the same view of Dr. Ongusi, I was of the view that the Democrats take a very lukewarm approach to matters because they just want to get into office. And when they get there, they start giving away the store to the Demo Republicans to, 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 to stay in power until they get charged. But what I am saying is that those, um, the, 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 the number, the, 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 the differences that made the election is those young, those African-Americans who didn't show up. So they need to show up and then they don't need to just vote and go home. They need to stay on it. They need to not say, we let you in here yep, and this yep. is what you're gonna do. That yep. is what the, the Republicans do. But what, what they are saying is that they want to stay on the street. What I know for sure that staying on the street may gain you something, but it doesn't gain you everything. Exactly. I, 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 sorry, I'm getting uh, a, a red flag from Nairobi. <laughs> my, my editor is telling me I'm out of time. Oh, no. this discussion continues. <laughs> this is very... <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, let, you let me have then the last word. You oh, okay. have the, okay, last, go ahead. the last word on this. Okay. So, this is not to say, and, and I think it's really important for us to, to embrace the diversity of opinions because yes, it matters. It matters yeah. that there's an entire population of people who feel threatened, yeah. who feel dispossessed, and they feel like they cannot turn to any side for support. So we knew for a long time, we've known for a long time that the Republicans are not the party to go to because of the positions they've taken on racial issues. And then we hope that the, 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 the Democratic Party, um, and you know, granted from what has been said, there's a wing which, which is on the right side of this issue. And in fact, it, it was very evident during the, the convention. But the, 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 the fact of the matter is that this issue will need to be, have, will need to be resolved because it's the defining issue on this, on this, uh, in this election. And if not, then I, I, I personally struggle with giving wholesome and and um, and um, uh, unreserved support for the for the Democratic Party. In fact, what is now happening, and you saw this during the the Republican convention, is that there are a lot of those voices of discontent amongst Black people who are beginning to switch, who are going back to to the Republican Party, which they say had left us. But then on the other side, we are not getting supported on the issues that are important to us. So I think that's going to be really important. And if the Democratic Party is going to win win decisively, but also have the necessary majority, they're going to have to get to the bottom of this issue. Okay. Uh, and, and, and Chris, could, could I, could I just jump in just real quick? I think both parties have really good ideas. I think Republicans have some excellent ideas. I think Democrats have some excellent ideas. I really believe the party that's gonna win has to define what vision they have for America for the next four years. We have this complication that the Democratic Party 
party are normally lukewarm because they are they have a lot of constituencies to 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 to, 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 to do yeah. but on the the issue of black lives if they don't take a firm stand then uh, there are a lot of people who even in the background are thinking i better die knowing that i'm dying instead of being sedated so that <laughs> Dr. Angusi, I am with you completely, and we shall completely talk, talk tell you to uh, Biden and uh, Harris. But I think I will tell you to tell you tell you guys to vote with us because at least you have a table, some a seat on the table, which you can say. Right now, at the other side, you don't have a seat on the table. Thank you. This is great. Thank you very much. I really, this was, this was fantastic. Awesome. Uh, uh, viewers, uh, 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 this <laughs> this discussion continues next week. Uh, my name is Chris Ram. I'll see you next week. On <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gentlemen, guys. Gentlemen, take care. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs>